We actually have some questions that were we sent do? this week. We do. I thought we were about done. Well, this first one was sent in on Twitter using the hashtag corny drive through from Pete Boyle. What are your thoughts on Enzo Amore attempting to call out Tamatanga? Oh. Okay, well, you you got to tell me, you got to fill me in on the background. I've seen this promo, and we'll talk about it. But um, it, it, this is it, is this him him trying to shoot his own angle? Is this a match that's going to take place somewhere, or did he just decide? What is the backstory on why the, there is an issue between Enzo and Tama Tonga? I don't know for sure because, like most of wrestling, I've ignored Ring of Honor for a good deal of time. <laughs> but I believe. It was during the match with Tamatanga and his brother at the Ring of Honor New Japan Madison Square Garden show last April. Remember, if you remember, there was a big controversy because they had Enzo okay, and yeah, they, run it was a it was a shoot angle where they jumped the rail and they weren't supposed to be there, but people found out it was an angle and they universally shit on it because nobody likes Enzo and fucking Cass, right? I believe, and again, someone could correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't followed this closely. I believe that maybe Tamatanga was one of the people not in on it, and he was one of the people in the match. Oh, okay. oh yeah, okay. Well, then, <laughs> you know, I the only time that anybody ever busted into anything I was doing, and and I didn't know about it, um, was in Dallas at, at my last night in world class. In uh, the Tarrant County Convention Center in Fort Worth, actually, 1985 is Fourth of July. It was my match with Sunshine, right? Or my my challenge because the Texas Commission wouldn't actually let us advertise a match between a man and a woman. So, the challenge was that, uh, you know, we were doing the women's lib thing, and I'd fucking, you know, uh, give her all the goddamn pots and pans and rattling the pots and pans around in the kitchen bullshit and everything, right? And the time comes, I said, you couldn't even knock me off my feet if I was blindfolded with my hands behind my back. So the deal was I'd be blindfolded, have my hands behind my back, and she would have one shot to knock me off my feet, and then I could do anything I wanted to sunshine. So that was the the fucking premise. And of course... The referee gets distracted. Here comes Kabuki. I'm standing there, thinks it's sunshine. He gives me the fucking thrust kick, knocks me ass over tea kettle, fucking jumps out. The referee turns around. I'm laying there. What the fuck? <laughs> Sunshine's standing over me. They ring the bell. I take the hood off, and there she is. And I'm like, how? Oh, what the fuck? Like, she knocked me the fuck out, right? People actually paid to see this. It was because of the promos. But right as we're going into the thing and setting up the premise of this deal, all of a sudden, in the ring comes Chris Adams. <clears throat> and he starts cutting a promo about how he he had already wrestled. He was leaving the fucking convention center when suddenly Bruiser Brody leaped out in front of his car and broke his windshield with a fucking chain or something. Well, of course, Bruiser Brody was not even in the state of Texas. It was goddamn deal they were shooting because they were going to you know bring him back in the territory, right? But... He says that, and they're, oh, and, and and we're going to do this and that and the other thing. He cuts his promo and gets out. I'm like, what the fuck? We had already started our fucking setup. And come to find out the reason later on was they said, well, we were afraid we'd run out of TV time, and we wanted to send Chris out to make that announcement. I said, but the, had the television time shortened in the time, the four minutes that you sent us out there till you decided to do this? Because I was hot, right? They broke up the fucking flow of our deal. So that's why I cussed them. That's actually the first time I cussed the office out. I cussed them all out, and I said, that's why we're already fighting. The Midnight Express were in the Omni that night. I'd agreed to come back and do this. I said, it's kind of bullshit. That's why we're fucking in Atlanta, and, and we'll be over there on national TV. Thank you very much. But anyway, I can understand if Tamatonga had an angle go on in his match and was pissed about it. Did he say something about Enzo to then provoke this? Because why is Enzo calling Tamatanga out? Well, they have gone back and forth on Twitter. I don't know who started it. I don't know when it started. But it seems to be happening more frequently as of late. Okay, well, anyway, here's my thoughts. I watched one of the promos where Enzo is on the fucking beach, right? Or some is is that a beach? You saw it. Is it a beach? Is it a, he's out out in he in, in, the snow. in public? The one I saw, he was in the snow. Was that snow? 
All right, I was. I thought it was sand. In Wyoming? Okay. What beach is oh, in wait, Wyoming? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, that's right. He said it's a little nipply out here. Okay, he's out in the snow. That's right. All right, whatever the fuck. Well, I was, it was a small little screen there. Uh, but it, the point is, I was watching him because it's a close-up of his face because he's fucking shooting it himself with the goddamn the selfie stick, right? Or he's just reaching out and he's got the camera or the phone in his hand. Correct? There is no cameraman. I believe so. Because it's right up on him. The promo was incredible. Apparently, that's why he got the job in the first place, because he can talk his ass off, and he's full of bullshit, and it's just that line of bullshit that it's colorful fucking talk, right? People like that kind of shit. That's the essence of wrestling. But apparently, he's also a real fucking lunatic, and and that's why that they fucking all hated him and couldn't wait to get rid of him. But the promo itself, besides the fact, you know what to me was off-putting about the promo? He's looking to the right of the of the camera lens. He's looking at his hand holding the camera or something. Did you get that? Did you notice that? I did notice that. I wasn't sure if it was because of the glare of the sun off the snow or why, but well, I didn't he, No, it wasn't glare of the sun. He could have fucking turned 15 <laughs> degrees and he wouldn't have had the goddamn glare. He was looking to the right off camera. I think at where he was holding, he was looking at his hand, but the fucking camera lens on the phone is right on the end of it. But it was so close that it looks like he's looking two feet off the off camera. One of those type of deals. When you go try to do your selfie, but you're looking at your hand instead of the fucking lens on the camera. Anyway, it was off putting to me. But otherwise than that, it was fabulous. I I got to say, I'm pretty sure he wrote it down and memorized it first, to be quite honest with you. But so I, I have to take a point or two off for that. But otherwise, because it was just, it was too quick with too much, you know, as they used to say, jive bullshit, you know, just the, the fucking clever lines and the fucking bing bing, the patter. Uh, but, but he's he wanted to be a rapper, right? So he probably writes lyrics. So he probably wrote it down and memorized it. But so I have to take a point or two off for that. But otherwise, it, no. But nobody else really could have written that, memorized it, and then delivered it like that. So it's still fucking freaking awesome. But I the 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 true artful promo should be off the top of the head. He's obviously very very talented on the mic. And you can use that in a number of ways to get people to either care about you or maybe in this case to get people to want to see you get your ass kicked. But if someone is a problem backstage, if someone constantly has problems with the people they work with, if management doesn't like them, what do you do with that person who exhibits the talent, not necessarily the in-ring talent, but the talent of being able to talk people potentially into the building? What do you do with that? Do you give up and just say it's not worth it or... Do you try to find a way to harness that? Well, no, you, b- both at, at whatever point, either one becomes necessary. It, it just buddy Landell many times was a pain in the ass to people in the locker room, but, it, it, but he had so much talent. Uh, but then there always came a time where it just, you know, fuck buddy. You can't sing moon river in the fucking I quit match just cause you hate Horner. You know, he's a fucking goof. We know this, but you expose the business. Um, you know, so real, real you, quick, real quick. Did you know they hated each other when you booked them in a program against each other? Well, I don't know if I don't even think that they hated each other. I think Buddy was just disgusted with Horner as, as everybody got to be sooner or later. But also he thought it was beneath him. And this was <clears throat> I was trying to and that was 92 rather than 95. The 95 Buddy, we immediately put on top because as we've talked about before, good buddy had come back and, and he was there and you could trust him and he made it through the whole fucking year. But you know, the 92 buddy was, we got to, you know, check buddy out and see, I wasn't going to put him on fucking top and, and it, he didn't last, but he thought Horner was beneath, beneath him to do that program, <clears throat> which, you know, if buddy, if good buddy or bad buddy had been good buddy, Horner would have been beneath him. I wouldn't have put him there. So the, the point is, you know, the locker room was always full of fucking outrageous guys. And, you, you know, in some respect, all of them were, that's why you were in wrestling or why you used to get in wrestling business because you didn't want to be a normal person. 
Um, and you had some special talent that, that, you know, you didn't have to be. Um, so you always tried to, if somebody was useful, you know, figure out a way to tolerate them and point them toward their best fucking efforts. But at some point, you know, if you had to do something, you had to do something. But Enzo, as much heat as I've heard that, you know, he had with the boys, I think, you know, even though he was that great of a promo, <clears throat> especially in a company that big, you, you know, you just can't put up with somebody that has struck almost everybody in the locker room that way. It's, it's, it's got to be him at that point. And now having said this also, is Tama Tonga in on this or is, was he, if he was really pissed at Enzo that he was in an angle in their match and he said something or whatever the fuck, is he still pissed at Enzo for real? Because if he is, it, it, what is Enzo trying to do? If he's trying to work himself into a match and the Samoan is pissed, good God, who the fuck wants to fight a pissed off Samoan? It, I mean, it, it, or Tongan. It, or Tongan. Well, uh, whatever the case may be, if he's a member of the family, <laughs> if he's one of the island boys, the last thing you would want to do is piss him off for real. And then even if, if some promotion said, well, we could make money with this and then book it, he would fucking kill Enzo working with him. My God. Uh, so I don't know what can be gained by that. The last thing you want to do is piss off any of the, whatever island that they're from, uh, if, members of the family. Good God. And going back to Enzo and his talent on the mic, obviously he behaved well enough that he went from NXT to the main roster. He got called up. Then there are various issues that some people have. But again, going back to him and his talent on the mic, what do you do with someone like that? Well, I mean, in in what way? is Are we still acting like he's a wrestler? Because he was kind of the shits at that, wasn't he? Or do do we, what do you mean? Do we make him a manager? He's good on the microphone, but here's the thing. He's only good on the microphone with his line of bullshit being him. So he can't be an announcer. He would distract. He can't, he can be a manager, but he would have, it would have to be a manager where he had the majority of the heat, kind of like me, and his boys protected him because it, in, especially in his case, all of his bullshit is pretty much all about him. It's, he has to be him. He can't be anybody else. So that's the way you'd have to use him. 